Hello, my name is Ben Crabb. I do technical sales and support here at Apogee Instruments. I'm here to talk about our new MicroCache Bluetooth logger. This is a little uh, Bluetooth enabled battery powered device that connects with your smartphone and interfaces with any of our unamplified analog sensors, any of our sensors that put out a little millivolt signal this MicroCache can log. Um, and so I'll just briefly go over some of the um, features and specs of the microcache and then I'll show off uh, with the phone how to connect it and some of its, um, some of its measurement uh, capabilities. So here's a picture of it and an idea of the dimensions. Um, there is a, a little 4 to 20 uh, threaded hole in the back for mounting. Uh, so you can mount it to any of our mounting brackets. Uh, by default, most of our sensors come with this little cable. It's about uh, 12, feet, uh, 12 inches long, one foot long, 30 centimeters. And so that makes a nice compact unit. We also have for our PAR sensors, we've got a two meter cable length option uh, for measurement underwater or for corals. Uh, let's see. This app or this uh, micro cache connects with your phone with a little smartphone app called Apogee Connect. You can find it on the Apple App Store or the Google Play Store. Uh, just search for it. Here is an overview of the specs. I'll point out a couple of the major ones. The IP rating is IP67. This means that it is uh, rugged for outdoor use. I've got a couple on the roof of the Apogee building and they've been snowed on. It's the end of January now. They've been up there for months and they're, they're doing fine. Uh, let's see, the weight is only 52 grams, so this would be great for mounting on a drone if you wanted to fly it around and, and take aerial measurements. Uh, the data storage capacity is almost half a million data points, and the battery life ought to be um, long, uh, one or two years based on this 10 second sampling interval or 60 second sampling interval uh, with an average of five minutes of daily connected time. That battery life will be dependent on the amount of time that you're connected with your phone. The Bluetooth communication um, requires more power than just the logging. Uh, let's see, uh, the last thing on this that I'll point out is the ADC, the analog to digital uh, converter resolution. This is 24 bits. So that's two rays of the 24th power, uh, number of intervals across the two and a half volt measurement range, uh, which is negative one and a quarter volt to one and a quarter volt. And so that's very fine resolution measurements. Uh, you can distinguish very fine changes in the voltage value from the sensors. Uh, oh, one more thing I'll point out, a two thirds double A is what it runs on. So this is a little unusual battery size, but you can find it online uh, in battery stores. It's not too hard to find. And it just looks like a double A AA battery, but it's a little bit, a little bit shorter. So it is a great uh, solution for spot measurements. Uh, we're talking about the, uh, in particular, the PAR application now. Spot, spot measurements, logging PPFD values. This is photosynthetic photon flux density, that value that's expressed in units of micromoles per meter squared per second of, of light within the 400 to 700 nanometer wavelength for plants. Uh, and calculating DLI and photo periods. DLI is the daily light integral. This is just the, the summation of all those PPFD values over the course of a day. Uh, and the photo period is how many hours over the last 24 has the light been above a threshold. And you can set a custom threshold in here. By default, it chooses half a micromole, which is quite dark. Um, uh, and then these two graphics just show the concept of DLI across the, across the country per month. So this is just from, from sun, uh, but of course if you're growing indoors, uh, electric lights will also uh, contribute to your DLI situation. And on the right, uh, this is a, a document that you can link to on, on our website. It, it came through, the, uh, through Purdue University's Extension Office, and it highlights the, uh, the DLI values for a whole a lot of different species. Uh, so with our device, with this, mi with this micro cache logger, you can uh, precisely measure your light levels for optimum, uh, the optimum level for your plants and the optimum photo period for your plants. Okay, here's an overview of the screens in the app. Uh, just briefly, the overview screen uh, gives you a look at all, this, all the micro caches you've been connected to. Um, and so you can, you can be connected to as many micro caches as you have with the app. In this screenshot, just one of them is connected and you can see it's got a value of 18.4 uh, micromoles per meter squared per second. The other ones aren't connected, but if they were, you'd also see live readings from those. 
the logging uh, setup screen. You get to this by clicking on a little gear icon. Um, this will allow you to set up your logging and sampling, sampling intervals. Uh, and uh, the fastest sampling you can do is, is one second sampling. Of course, that'll drain your battery a little faster. Uh, in this case, uh, looks like we have it set to 10 second sampling and one minute logging in this screenshot. One minute logging is still quite fast. Uh, you could log every 10 minutes or every 15 minutes and still get a real good idea of, of your light levels through the course of the day. Uh, let's see, this live meter display. Uh, you can go to live meter mode and then this graph will update every second with new values as you, you can walk around and, and put it under this light and under that light and, and be able to see precisely uh, the light levels. On this mode you can also do a manual data collection so there's a button a little lower on this screenshot where you can push the button and it'll timestamp, give a date and time and your micromole value. And those will be there the next time you open the app as well. <clears throat> Then over here on the far right side of the screen, uh, this is after you've downloaded log data, uh, you can take a look at um, what's been going on over the course of the previous days or weeks that you haven't been attending to your sensor perhaps. And in this case, I've uh, pulled a fast one a little bit. This graph is not just from an SQ500, uh, which is what this blue-headed sensor is, but this one's from a, a new sensor that we have, the PAR-FAR sensor. So this has two diodes. One measures the PAR range, and the other diode measures far red light, which is also Im important for plant uh, photosynthesis and morphology or shape. And so on this graph, you can see there's, there's the green uh, curves each day. Uh, that is the PAR level, and then the far red light uh, is, is expressed with the red line, and those are smaller values. But anyway, you can get both values from this new PAR-FAR sensor. On the far right uh, screen grab, uh, you see the daily light integral, and so this is the value I was talking about previously. That's just the summation of all those PPFD values over the course of the day. It's expressed in moles per meter squared per day. And then uh, you can also see your photo period, which is the number of hours over whatever dark threshold you've set. And so those are the kind of summaries you can get uh, from collecting the log data off of your PAR sensor with the microcache or from your PAR-FAR sensor with your microcache. Uh, I think I mentioned this before, but we do have two uh, cable lengths, the approximately one foot or 30 centimeter length, which is the default length for, for all of our sensors uh, before it gets to that little connector. Uh, but for coral enthusiasts or underwater users, we do have a two meter cable length uh, that you can order and that just gives you a little bit more leeway to put the sensor down in the water. I wouldn't go dunking the microcache in water, but it'd, it'd probably be fine for a, a brief dunk, but I wouldn't put it un under for long. Um, and then this just shows how it connects to our brackets. It's got that uh, quarter 20 threaded hole in the back. And so it's, it's pretty easy to mount. It's got some grooves on here. You could use zip ties to connect it to things. Uh, oh, and then our, our web page, our product web page. You can go to our website, apogeeinstruments.com. You click on products up here and you'll be able to quickly see microcache Bluetooth logger. And you get to this web page and there's more information and, and uh, and things you can see. And there's the URL for you. I think that's the end of the slides that I have. And so now I'll switch over to HDMI 2 and get this phone connected so we can show off the, um, the sensor or the, uh, the functionality of the app. Let's see, screen mirroring. Here we go. Okay, Apogee Connect is this uh, app with the logo, kind of looks like a planet, it's green colored. And so we click on that. Here's the Apogee Connect uh, kind of general screen. So on this phone, there's been a lot of sensors that have been connected in the past, a lot of different micro caches. Each micro cache is uniquely identified by its serial number here in this screen. That makes it a little easier to know which one you're connected to. The one I've got here is serial number 10, 1085, uh, and I don't think that's connected yet. Uh, and so to connect, we just push the big green button on here for uh, two seconds or so, three seconds, and this little LED will start flashing. That means it's advertising. Now we click on this plus button up here to add a new device. It searches for the device, it quickly finds it. It's called Microcache 1085. This is the default name, it gets at the factory. So you just tap on that. <coughs> 
and it gets connected. Uh, in this case, uh, this SQ500 is the correct sensor, but if it wasn't, you could just click on Choose Model, and you can scroll through and choose the model that you want. I'll hit Cancel because it was correct. You could enter a custom calibration, but of course this one just has a standard factory calibration, so we'll leave it alone. But if you wanted to, you could enter a, a new calibration number there in there to multiply your millivolt value and get a, a calibrated value. So we'll just, uh, we could rename it here, whatever we want, but we'll just leave it microcache 1085 for now. Now this thing that we just added should be at the bottom of the list. Here it is uh, with the current micromole reading. So tap on that. And now we get to kind of the more, uh, well, the, the microcache specific display. And we get, a, we get an instantaneous update of the, mi of the uh, micromole value. If we cover this sensor up, it should drop to zero. A little bit of noise around zero, but that's what it's at. Um, and if we uncover it, it comes back to that approximately five micromole value in here. Let's see, I will show off, let's see, the, uh, the live meter mode. Let's click on that. And this will give a graph that's updated every second. And so right now it's just going to bop around approximately five micromoles. Um, if we were to cover this up, it'll drop down to zero. Uncover it, it'll go back to approximately five. If we were to point it at the lights in here, it'll go up a little bit. If we were to get it closer to the lights, it'll go up even more. And if we were outside in the sun, of course, um, it would be much higher than what we're seeing in here. But you can see that you can get instantaneous live meter mode uh, graphical results right there. Uh, if you click on view data, there's your data every second for what we've been doing. Uh, let's go back. Down here, these are the manual data collection values. I'll clear this table, it must have been from before. But if we hit record current value, you get a timestamp, date, time, micromole value. And so you can walk around and take values uh, by clicking this record current value uh, button. And uh, the next time you open the app, those will still be in there. Uh, you, can, you can export the data, uh, well you can look at the data, and then you click this little sharing icon up in the top right, and you can select the app you want to email it to yourself or send it to you, your computer in some other way. And that'll give you a CSV, uh, CSV file. Oh, I think it's a, a, a semicolon separated file, but a, a tabular data file that you can use. Okay, so that's the live meter mode. Uh, let's see, I think we already went over settings. I went over it on the, on the static uh, screenshot. But here's the settings. You can adjust logging and sampling intervals. Uh, you could turn logging on and off. If it's on, it's using up the battery. So if you want to save your battery, just make sure you turn logging off in the settings. Even if you unscrew this, even if you unscrew this, the microcache is still logging. It's just logging noise. It's not logging anything good. And so it'll eventually eat up its battery. So you want to turn logging off if you're going to store this uh, for an extended period of time. To reconnect it, there's a little notch on this. And so you just kind of, well, you just kind of twist it until it falls into place. And then you, you know, finger tighten it. You don't have to tighten it too much. And then it's good to go. Okay, what else? Water correction. Uh, you turn this on, when you take measurements underwater, the light kind of bounces off the sensor and so the sen uh, more than it does in the air, and so the sensor reads inaccurately low. But we've characterized that. On this model, it reads 32% low. And so if you put this correction on here, it'll boost the values back up to the correct values for underwater measurements. But we're not doing that, so I'll leave that off. Uh, some other settings in here, including this dark threshold that'll help define the photo period. Down at the bottom, you get some information about the serial number of your microcache and the hardware and firmware versions and the current time. Um, your time uh, on the microcache over the course of weeks and months might be off by a couple seconds. Uh, and so you can always go match current time. In this case, I think I matched it very recently, so it's still very accurate. Uh, let's see. Now, let's show you uh, how to collect some logs. Currently, there's just two logs available for collection. So it was about 20 minutes ago I last collected logs off this device. Uh, but we could do that. Um, and so we'll just create a new data set. It's called New Data Set 4. It's not going to be very interesting, but we'll hit Collect Logs. Boom, we got them. 
I don't even know if they display if there's only two of them. <laughs> but more interesting, <laughs> more interestingly, if there were more than two in there, we'd see a graph. But let's go collect logs. We'll hit create new. And now it'll be new data set five. And what you can do, I know this one has been logging data for about uh, since early December. And so on this start time, I'm going to hit start time, and I'm going to kind of roll back the clock by about four days to January 26th, and I'm going to set that as my start time. Here's my end time right now, January 30th in the late afternoon. So I hit collect logs. Oh, there's my two data points. They finally showed up. It's a very exciting data set. Regardless, here's our new logs coming in. There were about 500 of them, and now they're all collected. And now our display updates. Now we're looking at new data set 5. If we wanted to go back, we could hit switch data set and we could look at new data set 4, which was our boring data set of two data points. But we don't want that. We'll switch back to new data set 5, which we just collected, which is these four days of data. And you can see that there's a, a diurnal pattern as the, as the lights come on and the sun comes up and then everything's dark at night. In this case, we had an electric light. This was sitting in a, in a window inside. But there was an electric light on it that was on a timer. And so at night, the electric light went off. In the day, it was on. And then the sun came up and so on. And uh, I, guess the, I guess the electric light must not have been on this day and this day. No, it wasn't. I remember we, we disconnected it. Uh, but anyway, you can view this data. You can click on view data. And you'll see each time stamp, date, time, micromole value over the every 10 minutes. So 10.30 PM, 10.40 PM, and so on and so on. Uh, over the course of time that you had data collected. And if you grab this thing on the side and scroll all the way to the bottom, <coughs> here's the most recent one that was collected at 420 um, uh, today. The next graph on this log data summary is the daily light integral. Uh, again, this is the, the summary of all the PPFD values over a 24-hour period. And you can see that uh, it was inside, so we didn't get real high moles per day. But it was around three and a half this day and around two moles on those days. And you can hit view data, and you can see that. And if you wanted to share it, you'd click on that share button up in the, up in the top right corner again. And finally, we got the photo period. Now, this is a little fishy because there's three graphs here, three bars here that are all around 24 uh, hours per day. And we saw that it was dark on these, on these graphs. It looks like it's, it's dark at night. Well, I think there was a little light on over the course of the, of the night that, that kept the, the micromole values at around three, where usually they would go down to zero. So what we can do is we hit this setting uh, gear, we click on that, we go back down to our dark threshold, I'm going to put in a value of 5. This is kind of an unusually big value, but just to show off this um, photo period of capability. If you set the, the dark threshold to 5, now this, uh, this uh, <coughs> photo period summary updates. Rather than 24 hours a day, now it says it's around 12 hours a day, which makes more sense uh, in line with our, our graph here. Uh, let's see, what else do we have? We've gone through settings, live meter. Uh, switching data sets. I think, I think that's about all of the um, major functionalities of the microcache. Um, again, this little device uh, will interface with a single um, Apogee sensor, any of our unamplified analog sensors that produce little millivolt outputs. Uh, it's small, it's rugged and, and weatherproof, and um, we hope that a lot of people find a lot of use out of this. Uh, so thank you very, very much for watching, and uh, see you next time.